All right, y'all, today we're going to be talking about making some beef bone broth. Uh, a few things I want to go over real quick are the different types of bones and what exactly goes in a bone broth or a stock. Um, so today we've got a couple of different bones in here. We've got uh, canoe bones, knuckle bones, uh, we also have marrow bones, oxtail, rib bones, and some beef trim. So this right here is a, a canoe bone, which is also the same as a marrow bone. It's just this one is cut long ways, so it's almost like a canoe. Um, there's a lot of bone marrow in there, which adds a lot of richness and flavor. Um, these are the knuckle bones. There's a lot of tendons, some fat, and you can see a little bit of meat on here, which is going to help give us a little bit of that beefy flavor. Um, the other cut we have in here, I said earlier, is oxtail. Um, this is a real rich uh, cut of meat coming from the tail, a lot of collagen. This will really help gel up your stock. Um, and as I mentioned, we also have rib bones. Um, you can take bones, if you're cutting like boneless ribeyes, you have bones left over from your ribeyes, those are great to go in there as well. And then this is just, just some beef trim, some scraps from different cuts of steak that we've trimmed off. So one of the things to remember with bone broth is you're not really stuck to a certain parameter. I've got to have just this or just that in my stock. It can really be whatever you want to put in it kind of like a soup almost. So those are our bones. What we're going to do is we're going to roast these for about 30, 45 minutes in the oven at about 425 to 450 degrees so they get real nice and brown because that brownness, that caramelization is what's going to add a lot of flavor to our broth. So once we get these brown, you see right here I've got onion, celery, and carrot cut up. This is what is traditionally known as mirepoix. Um, it's typically two parts onion to one part celery to one part carrot. So we're going to add that to our uh, pot once we're done roasting the bones, uh, along with some bay leaves and cider vinegar. Uh, so I'm going to get this going in the oven, and then I'll pull some out, and we'll see what they look like. All right? All right, so it's been about 35, 40 minutes on the bones. You can see how we've got some good color, the same with the beef trim. It's got that nice roasted meaty look to it. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add all of these to this stock pot. And once I get everything added, I'm gonna pour some water in the bottom of this pan because there's gonna be a lot of brown bits stuck to the bottom. And that's what is affectionately known as spawn. It's, it's just little bits of flavor stuck to the bottom of the pan, which is really what brings a lot of added flavor to the stock. So I'm going to make sure that I scrape all that stuff out. And that's what a good old wooden spoon is handy for. We'll throw a little water in there, scrape it up, and uh, add our mirepoix with some bay leaves and a little cider vinegar. One of the things to remember with uh, making your bone broth is adding some kind of acidity will help bring out more of the nutrients from the bones whether it's cider vinegar or lemon juice or something of that nature, um, it will help bring out a little more nutrients for you. So in just a second, when we get to the bottom of this, I'll show you what the fawn looks like. All right, so now that we've got all that back in our pot, like I said, I'm just gonna add a little bit of water in here to help scrape up that fawn. As you can see, around the edges of the pan, there's all these little brown bits everywhere. So I'm going to use a wooden spoon to keep from scraping the metal in there, which can give you a little bit of an off taste. So whenever you're scraping a pan, if possible, you want to use wood on a, on a metal pan, not metal on metal. So I'm just going to scrape all these bits off, get this pan relatively clean. Plus my dishwashers love it because I sit here and scrape the pan and then it's pretty much clean by the time they get it. So once I get this scraped, We'll basically just add this water, pour everything in there. We're going to add our mirepoix, and then we'll throw in a small little handful of bay leaves. Like I said, the cider vinegar. We'll cover it with water, and then typically we bring it up to a boil, and then we'll reduce it to a low simmer. Um, put the lid on it to keep the water from evaporating out, because this will cook for 
24 to 48 hours because it's a slow process to draw out all those nutrients from the bones. So we'll get this going, we're going to let it cook overnight, and we'll come back tomorrow and see what it looks like. All right, y'all, uh, we just pulled off our stock. It's actually gone for about 36 hours or so. Uh, so now that it's done cooking, if you look on the top of the stock over here, there's a good bit of fat. You'll notice that that tallow tends to separate out. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to end up straining the stock through, uh, we've got a wide hole china cap, and then we're going to strain it through a chinois, which is a very fine mesh strainer to catch any of the fine particulates to keep it from being grainy or gritty because a lot of that bone and debris will break loose into the, uh, the stock. So you see that, that fat on top and you'll notice it more. So I'm going to strain it once through the china cap and then like I said through the chinois and you'll really be able to notice the difference. Now a lot of people really want to get rid of the fat. Um, here at uh, the pavilion, our own farm restaurant, we try to utilize everything that we can. So all that fat that rises to the top will actually take these containers, we'll chill them down, we'll let them sit in the fridge for a day and that tallow that rises to the top will solidify into basically a big chunk and then we'll pull that off, scrape any uh, bits that are stuck to the bottom of it and then we basically boil it with water and then we'll strain it through cheesecloth and we use that fat uh, to cook our steak fries. Uh, sometimes if we do fried pork chops or something like that we we'll use it as a, a frying oil. Um, it just has a lot more flavor it's actually a lot healthier for you than most uh, most greases, um, whether you're using you know fryer oil, blended oil, olive oil. Let's we'll see if I do this on camera without spilling anything. That was pretty good. So now you'll notice. It'll start to kind of separate. You can see up here where it's a little clear looking, that's more of the tallow. And down here where it's darker is our actual beef base. So since we put in, a lot of this comes from the marrow bones and a lot of it comes from the beef trim, which has more fat and tendons and stuff like that. Uh, we also sometimes, We've got extra just beef fat, beef suet, we'll put it in there to render so we can get tallow for our steak fries and stuff like that. So we're just going to keep on straining. And like I said, this will naturally separate. You can already see how it's kind of divided up. So this top part right here will end up cooling and it will turn pretty solid. Um, so usually we'll take a knife and rub it around the edge and we can kind of pull it out in chunks. And on the bottom edge of it, there'll be some little, uh, basically where the, the stock and the oil kind of meet. Um, it almost kind of bonds together, so we usually scrape that part off. So we are in, end up with just straight beef tallow. Like I said, for, for steak fries, baking, pretty much anything you would use oil for. You can saute vegetables in it, whatever you want. So that way we use all the animals. 